the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. To all the pastors, theological students, and saints who are attending today's Shincheonji online seminar, it is great to meet you all. I am the host of today's event, Jo Young Hyun. The reason why Shincheonji Church of Jesus can testify the meaning of the parables and its physical fulfillment is firstly because the promised time has come and all parables have become open plainly. And also, the secrets of heaven that was hidden has all been seen and heard by the promised pastor who saw and heard it right next to Jesus. Today, the key to the secrets of heaven, which is the true meaning of the parables and its physical fulfillment, let us check it and have a precious time to realize it. Then firstly, let us all pray with the same heart. To our faithful and most holy Father God, the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. We thank you for allowing the Shincheonji Online Seminar to be held all around the world for your loving grace. As your work is now being fulfilled and the physical fulfillment has appeared in today's time, there are so many souls of the people who are thirsty for your word. At this time, as you sent the messenger who speaks on behalf of you, the promised pastor, we thank you. At this time, we wish for all those so many people who long for your kingdom and who want to know about it as they come before here, please remember them and allow the eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand, as now the precious word becomes testified from heaven today. Let us all realize we can all give glory and thanks to you, Father. It will be a time of grace. With all these words we pray in the name of Jesus, who bore the cross for our sins. Amen. The Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings Today is the 15th lesson. It is on the figurative mountain, rock, and idol. Then, we will greet Thedeus Tri Pek Sung Wat Instructor who will testify the word today. The Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings To all the pastors, theological students, and saints around the world attending today's Shincheonji Online Seminar. How are you? It is great to meet you. I am Center Instructor Baek Sung Won, who have learned from the Thetis tribe leader from among the 12 tribes of Shincheonji. Our tribe leader has learned the word from Chairman of Shincheonji, Lee Man Hee. I hope we can all listen well to the testimony on the parables of secrets of heaven and their true meanings today and have a precious time in God. The word I will deliver today, it is Elementary Lesson 15, The Figurative Mountain, Rock and Idol. I believe all of our pastors will already know well about this content. However, I would appreciate it if you could listen well to my explanation today. Inside the Bible, there is a physical mountain, rock, and idol that appear. However, there is also the spiritual ones that are figuratively describing using the physical characteristics. Physical mountain will be a real mountain, like Mount Sinai, where Moses met God. And also, the physical rock will be like the stone tablet that had the law and the commandments written, given by God, written on the tablet of stone. This was a real stone that was given to Moses. Also, there was physical idols, like the golden calf that Aaron made at the time of Moses. This was a physical idol. However, all of our believers would know very well about these physical things. However, inside the books of prophecy inside the Bible, there are also the spiritual mountain, spiritual rock, and spiritual idol that has the same physical characteristics. Then what will be the true meanings of them? First of all, let's check the answer of these parables. The true meaning of the figurative mountain is an organization, 
like a church or temple. Then what will be the figure of rock? The rock, it is the word of judgment, and the pastor who received the authority of judgment. And also, what is the figure of idol? It is a teacher who teaches lies, in other words, false pastor. Then why this are, these are the answers? Now I'll explain the answers of the parables with the Bible in detail. Firstly, I would like to explain about the figure of mountain. Mountain is higher than the level ground. It is made up of many soils, rocks, and trees. Then, the spiritual mountain would also be made up of spiritual soils, spiritual rocks, and spiritual trees. As we learned last time, the spiritual soil, trees, and rocks they all had the meaning of a person. Therefore, the meaning of a spiritual mountain is an organization that have many people gathered. Even in the world, when many people are gathered, we use the expression, mountain of people, sea of people. Then, where will be the place, like an organization, where many people are gathered in the religious world? Yes, it will be the church or temple. That is why church or temple, or such organization is figuratively described in the Bible as a mountain. Then, in order to find out about the spiritual mountain of the Bible, let's read the reference verse, Matthew 24, 15-16. So, when you see standing in the holy place, that abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judah flee to the mountains. Matthew 24 is the word of prophecy about the events of the second coming of the Lord. It says, When you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation. Here, the abomination that causes desolation is the destroyers who belong to Satan. And the holy place is a temple where God is at. Then, it means the destroyers of Satan have entered and captured the temple where God is at. Then, what would you need to do in order to be saved from this place? As it says afterwards, at this time, one has to flee to the mountain. Then, at the time of the second coming of the Lord, there is a mountain of salvation that one has to flee to, isn't it? If these words are fulfilled for us, then everyone, which mountain would you flee to? Would you go to the Himalayas or the Swiss Alps? Or would you go to the highest mountain in the world, Mount Everest? Then would we be saved? We must know that the mountain that Jesus told us to flee to is not a physical mountain, but it is a figurative spiritual mountain. We must realize the true meaning of this parable through the Bible and all enter into the mountain of salvation that is promised. Then now, in order to find out the true meaning of the figurative mountain, let's read Isaiah 2, 2-3. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains, it will be raised above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us His ways, so that we may walk in His path. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. It says, in the last days, there is a mountain of the Lord's temple that appears. Here, the temple, it means the house of God. But it says, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. Then, would this be a physical mountain? It is not referring to a physical mountain, but God's temple is 
being figuratively described as a mountain. It is described as high because the level of the word from this temple of God is high. That is why it is the highest mountain. The organization such as a church or temple where the word of God comes out from becomes a reality of the spiritual mountain. Then, how many kinds of mountain would there be that appears in the books of prophecy in the Bible? There are three kinds of mountains in the book of prophecy. When the prophecies are fulfilled, there are three kinds of people that will appear. According to the order of the prophecy, there is a betrayer, destroyer, and savior that will appear. Therefore, even the mountain, which is an organization where people are gathered, appear in three kinds. The mountain of betrayal, mountain of destruction, and there is also the mountain of salvation. Then first, what is the mountain of betrayal? It is an organization where betrayers are gathered. Betrayal means the pastor and the people who belong to God broke the covenant with God. So therefore, they've changed from the people who belong to God, but now have become the people who belong to Satan. Then, inside the Bible, in Genesis 2, there is a mountain of betrayer that appears. In Genesis 2, God appointed Adam over the Garden of Eden and asked him to rule over it. However, this Adam, he broke God's covenant and he ate the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and became the possession of Satan. And that is why Garden of Eden had become the belonging of Satan. But in Revelation, there's also the mountain of betrayal that also moved this affiliation. It is in Revelation 13. In Revelation 13 verse 6, there's a tabernacle of heaven. This tabernacle of heaven, it is a temple where God is at. But it says, the saints of the tabernacle of heaven worship the beast and receive the mark of the beast on his forehead and right hand. In other words, they have betrayed. And that is why the tabernacle of heaven that has betrayed have become the reality of the mountain of betrayal at the time of the second coming of the Lord. They change from being belonging from God to Satan. In Revelation 8 verse 8, there's a huge mountain all ablaze that is thrown into the sea. This huge mountain all ablaze is the mountain of betrayal that is judged and abandoned to the world. It is a tabernacle of heaven that betrayed in Revelation 13. Then what will be the mountain of destruction? In Jeremiah 51 verse 25, there is a destroying mountain that destroyed the whole earth. In Revelation 18, 2 to 3, there is Babylon that destroyed all nations with the maddening wine of adulteries. This Babylon becomes the reality of the mountain of destruction that destroyed the whole earth. Then, would this Babylon, referring to that physical nation Babylon that existed a long time ago? No, it is not. In Revelation 17, 1-5, there is a prostitute and the beast with seven heads and ten horns. It is recorded the name Babylon on the forehead of the prostitute. As we learned in the previous lesson, the figure of beast. This prostitute and the beast are the false pastors. Thus, it is the organization of destroyers. But, they are also figuratively described as a mountain inside Revelation. Let's read Revelation 17, 9-10. This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, the other has not yet come. But when he does come, he must remain for a little while. In Revelation 17, 9-10, the seven heads that belong to the prostitute are called the seven hills and seven kings. As we learned previously, head is a spiritual king, which is pastor. Seven hills are the seven churches that the seven pastors rule over. This mountain is a mountain of destruction that is shown in Revelation. 
then would they have appeared in the physical fulfillment? If they really appeared, shouldn't we check the reality? When you hear this word more, then you will be able to check even the physical reality that has appeared according to its prophecy. This is how we find out about the mountain of betrayal and the mountain of destruction. Then which mountain should we go to? It is a mountain of salvation, isn't it? Then what will be the mountain of salvation we are very curious of? Shall we listen to the words of Jesus? The first reference verse that we read in the beginning, it is the words of Matthew 24, 15 to 16. We will understand the meaning of these words deeply. When it says, when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation, this holy place is the temple of God. But as the abomination that causes desolation is standing there, this means it is a mountain of betrayal where its affiliation has now changed. And the abomination that causes desolation, that is the organization of the destroyers, thus it becomes the mountain of destruction. Then when you see all these things, you need to flee to the mountain. Which mountain would that be? Yes, it is the mountain of salvation. In Isaiah 2, 2-3, In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established, and all nations will stream to it, it says. Then, what kind of mountain will be the mountain of the Lord's temple that appear in the last days? In Revelation 14, 1-3, there's a place where God and Jesus are standing. It is Mount Zion. And the reality of this Mount Zion is Revelation 15, 4-5. It is a temple of the tabernacle of the testimony that all nations will come and worship. As it says, all nations will come there and worship, it is the same words as it is recorded in Isaiah 2, verse 2, isn't it? This temple of the tabernacle of the testimony is a place that testifies the events of betrayal, destruction, and salvation that appeared according to Revelation. That's why it's called the Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony. Then would this place have been appeared? Yes, it has. It is the Shincheonji Church of Jesus, the Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony that appeared according to the promise of Revelation today. This is a place that God and Jesus are together. Therefore, the place that can testify all the secrets of heaven and the prophecy and even the physical fulfillment of Revelation. And in order to hear the word of the testimony, that is why all nations are streaming to it, isn't it? To all the pastors and saints who are listening to this word, let us all realize the secrets of heaven and enter into the promised mountain of salvation. I sincerely pray that we can all receive the blessing of kingdom of heaven and eternal life at the temple where God and Jesus are at. Now, we'll learn about the figurative rock. The true meaning of figurative rock is the word of judgment and the pastor who received the authority of judgment. According to the characteristic of a physical rock, as it is hard, it can break and smash. Likewise, the word of judgment and the pastor who received the authority of judgment is a figurative rock as it breaks the false truth of Satan and judges the wicked. To explain the figurative rock, we'll read the reference verse, Revelation 2, verse 17. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna, I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who receives it. At the time of the second coming of the Lord, Jesus promises to give the hidden manna and white stone to the one who overcomes. Then, what will be the white stone that the one who overcomes receives here? It wouldn't be simply a real, literal, white stone, right? In the book of Daniel, chapter 2, it is prophesied that a rock that was cut out, but not by human hands, smashed and judged the idols, and then established the eternal kingdom. This 
rock that smashed the idols and established the eternal kingdom, would it be a physical rock? Let's find out the reality of the figurative rock through the Bible. In terms of spiritual rocks, there are th two kinds, God's rock and Satan's rock. Firstly, let's find out about God's rock in the Bible. Let's read Isaiah 28 verse 16. So this is what the Sovereign Lord says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who trusts will never be dismayed. In the words of Isaiah 28, 16, God, He says, There will be a stone in Zion. It is a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. What is important is that the one who trusts in this stone will not be dismayed. Therefore, one has to believe in this stone to be receiving salvation, isn't it? Then, what will be the reality of this stone that one has to believe in. This prophecy was fulfilled at the time of the first coming of Jesus. In 1 Peter 2 verse 4 to 6, Jesus is called the living stone that is precious. And also, it confirms that this stone is the stone that is prophesied in Isaiah 28 verse 16 that will be in Zion. So therefore, the reality of the stone in Zion it was Jesus. Then, why was Jesus described as a stone? At the time of Moses, in Exodus 24 verse 12, the Word of God was recorded on a physical tablet of stone, and judgment was carried out with that very Word. At the time of the first coming, God recorded the Word on the tablet of the heart of Jesus, and Jesus judged with that Word. Therefore, as Jesus had the word written on him, he became the reality of the spiritual stone. In John 5 verse 22, it says that God entrusted all judgment to Jesus. That means the authority to judge was with Jesus. In John 12 verse 48, it tells us very clearly what does Jesus use to judge? Now, let us read John 12 verse 48. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. That very word which I spoke will condemn him at the last day. Jesus said, The very word which I spoke will condemn him at the last day. As we see through this word, we can know that Jesus judges through the word he received from God. Therefore, the word of God itself becomes the authority of judgment. Then, as Jesus received the authority of judgment, who did Jesus judge at the time of the first coming? In Matthew chapter 23, Jesus judged the corrupted, false pastors of physical Israel the Pharisees and teachers of the law with the word of God. He said, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! And then he revealed their identities and all their wrongdoings. However, the Pharisees and teachers of the law, who were the pastors of that generation, rather they were offended by the words of Jesus. They felt bad and rather condemned and persecuted Jesus as a cult, when Jesus was actually the one who received the authority to judge. Those who listened to the word of Jesus and repented and came out were able to be saved. However, those who did not listen to the words of Jesus and rather persecuted were judged by the word of Jesus, which became the rock. Then, at the time of the second coming, who would receive the authority to judge? At the time of the second coming, in Revelation 2 verse 17, Jesus promised that he will give the white stone to the one overcomes. This white stone is the word of judgment. 
Then, who will be the one overcomes who receives this white stone? The one who overcomes is the one who fights and overcomes the group of the dragon, the Nicolaitans, in Revelation 2 and 3. Also, in Revelation 10, he is the one who ate the open book from the angel in Revelation 10. In Revelation 16, he becomes the bowl of God's wrath that judged the betrayers and destroyers with the word of judgment. About this content, you will be able to learn in more detail later on. At the time of the second coming, when Revelation is fulfilled, according to these words, there must be the one overcomes who received the white stone from Jesus that appear. Jesus giving the white stone to the one overcomes means he has been appointed as the one to judge. The judgment here is not referring to the judgment of the events on earth, but it is judging the truth and the lies to all the pastors and believers who have the hope of heaven and eternal life. Today, if the one overcomes have appeared according to the Bible, then shouldn't we find out about who is the one overcomes? I pray that we can all become the one who become one with the promised pastor who received the white stone to judge from Jesus, and you can also receive the white stone, and you can become the pot of blessing who lead many people to salvation by realizing the word of truth. Next, it is Satan's rock. In Deuteronomy 32, 31-33, there is the rock of the enemies. God's enemy is Satan the devil, and Satan's rock, it is Satan's false pastor. In 1 Corinthians 10, verse 4, Christ was called the rock, and this is the rock of God. And the reality of the enemy's rock will be the false pastor who received the word of Satan. In Revelation 6, 15-16, there is a chosen people of the tabernacle that betrayed. They hid in the caves, mountains, and rocks, and hid from the wrath of Jesus. The caves and mountains is referring to the organization of Satan, symbolizing the Gentile denomination, and the rock is the Gentile pastor. As such, we can see that the pastor who receives Satan's authority and Satan's word is being described as Satan's rock. We must distinguish well of the two types of rocks, and we must find God's rock, who is a true pastor of God. Now, let's find out about the figurative idol. Now, how did you think about idol previously? Did you think about a statue like this in a Buddhist temple or a statue of an ancestor who passed away? But even in the Bible, is that the idol that is spoken as well? The spiritual idols spoken in the Bible are slightly different from the idol that we usually thought of. To tell you what is the answer of the figure of idol, idol is a false teacher or false pastor. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, there's the Ten Commandments that God gave. And one of them says, do not make idols, do not bow down, do not worship, worship them either. Physical idols, as we know, are made by the Gentiles in the Old Testament era. They made it through gold, silver, wood, and stones. And they worship, they bow down to it. However, inside the book of prophecies in the Bible, the idol is a spiritual idol, but they are describing using the physical characteristics of physical idols. It is referring to false pastor. Let's read Revelation 13, verse 15. He was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast, so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. In Revelation 13, verse 15, there is an idol that appears, 
but actually it's an idol that speaks. And then it says, all who refuse to worship the idol is to be killed. Then would this be an idol, such an idol like in a Buddhist temple or a statue that has battery put in so it can speak like a machine? No, it wouldn't be. Then what will be this idol? There's a reason why we must know about this idol. It's because in Revelation 21 verse 8, all idolaters will go into the fiery lake of burning surfer, thus they will enter into hell. Then everyone, have you ever worshipped idols or not? Have you never? Of course, we would not have worshipped physical idols. However, when revelation becomes fulfilled, if we do not know about the spiritual idols that will appear at that time, wouldn't we also possibly become idolaters? Therefore, we must know about this, right? The characteristic of physical idol, it is made by human hands, it does not have breath, and cannot hear nor see, but it is still respected and worshipped by people. Using these physical characteristics, what is the spiritual meaning of the spiritual idols? It is the one who does not have spiritual breath, the word, and therefore cannot lead people to salvation, but still is respected and served by people. It is the false pastor that is figuratively described as an idol. Now, we will look in the Bible to find the basis of this answer in detail. As we see in Habakkuk 2 verse 18, it says the image, which is an idol, that teaches lies, in other words, a false pastor who does not have the word is being described as an idol. Then, what would be the reason why a false pastor is described as an idol? What is common about an idol, idol and a false pastor? Let's read Isaiah 41, verse 21 till 24. Present your case, says the Lord. Set forth your arguments, says Jacob's king. Bring in your idols to tell us what is going to happen. Tell us what the former things were, so that we may consider them and know their final outcome. Or declare to us the things to come. Tell us what the future holds, so we may know that you are gods. Do something, whether good or bad, so that we will be dismayed and filled with fear. But you are less than nothing, and your works are utterly worthless. He who chooses you is detestable. As we see in Isaiah 41 verse 21 onwards, God tells that idols to present their cases. Presenting the cases would happen when someone is falsely accused. It means, if you feel being called an idol is unfair, show us the evidence that you're not an idol. An idol cannot tell us the things to come or what the future holds. It cannot give us blessings nor curses. However, people think this idol can do something for them and still respect it and worship it. However, it is less than nothing and its work is utterly worthless, it says. Then, what about the false pastor who does not have the word of God? It is like an entity, like an idol, right? It cannot testify what the future holds. It cannot testify of what are the things to come. It cannot testify about the prophecy. And also, as God is not together with them, they cannot give any blessings nor curses. But people, still, they think they can receive blessings and go to heaven. So they diligently serve the pastor. However, in reality, the pastor cannot lead the congregation member to salvation. So therefore, such a false pastor is same as an idol that is utterly worthless. Not knowing about the secrets of heaven nor the parables, cannot testify the prophecy nor the fulfillment that has appeared according to the prophecy. However, still says this and that according to their own thoughts will be the reality of the figurative idol. That is a false pastor. Now, as we have seen the reality of the figurative rock and idol, 
Let's also understand the reality of Daniel 2. Let's read Daniel 2, 31 till 35. You looked, O king, and there before you stood a large statue, an enormous dazzling statue, awesome in appearance. The head of the statue was made of pure gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of baked clay. While you were watching, a rock was cut out, but not by human hands. It struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and smashed them. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver and the gold were broken to pieces at the same time and became like chef on a threshing floor in the summer. The wind swept them away without leaving a trace, but the rock that struck the statue became a huge mountain and filled the whole earth. As we see in the prophecy of Daniel 2, there's a rock that is cut out that smashes the idol. And the rock that smashed the idol makes a huge mountain that fills the whole earth. Then, what would this mean? Firstly, the reality of the rock that was cut out it was Jesus at the time of the first coming who is a shepherd who received the authority of judgment from God. Then, what would be the reality of the idol that was judged at the time of the first coming being judged by Jesus who was a rock that was cut out? In Matthew 21, 42-44, Jesus referred to the words of Psalms 118, verse 22, and said to the high priest, and Pharisees of that time, that the stone that the builders rejected has become the capstone. And he also said, He who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and he on whom it falls will be crushed. Then firstly, the reality of the capstone that was mentioned here, it was Jesus, who at the time of the first coming was a shepherd who received the authority of judgment. And also, the builder who rejected that stone, it was the Pharisees and teachers of the law who didn't believe in Jesus and condemned him as a cult. Jesus judged the Pharisees and teachers of the law and the high priest at that time with the word received from God. So therefore, the reality of the idols that were broken to pieces and crushed. It was the pastors at the time of the first coming, the Pharisees and teachers of the law. Then, who will be the reality of the idols at the time of the second coming? As we see in Revelation 13, there's a beast with seven heads and ten horns that come up from the sea. As we saw in the previous lesson, the figure of beast here is the destroyers who does not understand the word of God. They are the pastors who receive authority from the dragon. Therefore, they are the reality of the idols, the false pastors of Satan. Also, as we see from Revelation 13 verse 11 onwards, there's a beast from the earth. And in verse 15, there's the images that receive the breath from the beast of the earth. Then, inside of the reference verse that was mentioned before, it is that idol that we read before. Now, we are able to know what is the reality of this idol, isn't it? The reality of the idol in Revelation 13, the idol that speaks, it is not a physical statue that we will find in a temple, but it actually is the false pastor that were appointed in the tabernacle of the chosen people. Then, who will be the reality of the rock that is cut out at the time of the second coming who judges these idols? It is the one ever comes who received the white stone in Revelation 2 verse 17. Then as the rock that is cut out judges the idol, it makes the huge mountain that becomes the eternal kingdom of God, isn't it? What will be this huge mountain? At the time of the first coming, Jesus judged and ended the organization of false pastors, the idols, then created God's kingdom of spiritual Israel. 
As you will learn in the future lesson, Figurative Israel, the spiritual Israel comes to an end at the time of the second coming. Then, what will be the eternal kingdom in Daniel 2? When would it appear? It actually appears at the time of the second coming. At the time of the second coming, there is the one of our comes who receives the white stone to judge from Jesus. He judges and ends the organization of Babylon, the idols, and then creates God's kingdom, the new spiritual Israel, the twelve tribes. God who left, and even Jesus and the kingdom of heaven, is promised to be together with the new spiritual Israel, twelve tribes. Therefore, this is a kingdom that is the eternal kingdom that is established after judging the idols. In Revelation 15, this kingdom is mentioned as the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony that all nations will come and worship. To the many pastors and believers who are listening to this word, if the eternal kingdom that is created after judging Babylon has appeared on this earth, do you not want to go there? If you listen to this word until the end, I trust that this word will become the path that leads you to that eternal kingdom of heaven. Until now, we have learned about the figure of idol. Are we able to understand well? If the idol is a false pastor, then who will be the ones who are worshipping the false pastor? Yes, they will become the idolaters. Then, what will be the spiritual meaning of eating the food sacrificed to idols? It means to eat the false doctrines of the false pastors. In Revelation 2, verse 14 to 15, Jesus rebukes the chosen people of the tabernacle for eating the food sacrificed to idols. Would this mean that the chosen people of the tabernacle are eating the food served at a memorial service? No, it is not. It is rebuking them for eating the false doctrines, the false truth of the false pastors. The one who can testify the reality of all these things, it is those who are the ones who were victorious over the beast at the very location where the events of Revelation 13 was fulfilled. Now we will summarize today's content. The figure of mountain is an organization like a church or a temple. Figure of rock is a word of judgment and the pastor who received the authority of judgment. Figure of idol is a false teacher or false pastor spiritual idolater, it is the people who serve false pastor. Also, the reality of the spiritual food sacrifice idol is the false doctrine of the false pastor, the Satan's knowledge, doctrine, and teachings. At the time of the first coming, Jesus received the word from God and judged and ended the organization of false pastors like the idols and then establish God's kingdom. At the time of the second coming, the one who fights and overcomes the group of the dragon receives the white stone to judge from Jesus and judges and ends the organization of Babylon and creates the eternal kingdom of God. To all the pastors and believers who are listening to this word, I know that you have been carrying a life of faith diligently with the hope of heaven. Therefore, I pray that we can all realize the secrets of heaven well and enter into the eternal kingdom of heaven that is created after judging the idols of Babylon. Today, we learned about the figure of mountain, rock, and idols. Were you able to understand well? Let us all realize about the secrets of heaven. And next lesson, we will learn about the figurative seal, trumpet, and song. The next instructor will teach next lesson 
in an even more fun and a clear way than me. I hope we will listen well to the words of next lesson as well. I hope we can all listen to today's word a number of times and seal them in our hearts and make the treasure of God ours. I pray in the name of the Lord that everyone who are listening to this word will realize the secrets of heaven, the parables and the physical fulfillment and fulfill the hope of heaven and eternal life. Lastly, with the heart to become one in God and Jesus and the Word, let us shout out all together. We are one in God and Jesus. We are one. Let us all pray. Our thankful and gracious and most holy Father God, today, through your grace and love, we were able to hear and realize the secrets of heaven, the parables, and its true meanings. We truly give you thanks. All the family of God who heard this word, so that we can all receive that blessing of kingdom of heaven and eternal life, please allow your grace to us. For those people who have not heard this word yet, please allow them to listen to this revealed word as soon as possible. As a kingdom of world becomes the kingdom of God, that world that you reign over, please allow that world to be fulfilled as soon as possible. As we give you all thanks, we pray all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for listening well until the end. Do we become God's possession by receiving God's seal? Or do we become Satan's possession by receiving Satan's mark? It becomes decided. At the time of the second coming of the Lord, it is prophesied to sound the trumpet and gather the elect. At the time of fulfillment of Revelation in Revelation 15, there is a Song of Moses and Song of the Lamb. Then, we will need to know what will be this song? Yes, as we saw in the preview, the next lesson will be the figurative seal, trumpet, and song. This will be the topic of the next seminar. The time is same as today, 10 a.m. So I hope we can all attend and let us all be the ones who can enter into our hope of Kingdom of Heaven. The Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings, Shincheonji Online Seminar, like this, through the Shincheonji Church of Jesus official YouTube channel, is being broadcasted all over the world, over 24 languages. If you have any questions or anything you are curious about the Shincheonji Church of Jesus or its teachings, then please call the phone numbers that are shown on the screen here, and we'll be happy to kindly guide you and answer your questions. Then, we will do the prayer that the Lord has taught us and complete all order of Shincheonji Online Seminar today. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. We thank you so much for being together with us today.